decisions you make. So please be fair to the state of Tamil Nadu. Thank you for the opportunity, Madam. Manani Sadasri Sri Labu Sri Krishna Ji. Thank you, ma'am. Allow me to speak on the Finance Bill 2024. I can't speak on this before thanking the taxpayer who has been coming out in big number. The number has been increased from 6.7 crore to almost 7.28 crore this year. Even the earnings from the income tax has increased by almost 32 percent, ma'am. So this shows the confidence that the income taxpayer have, is, is having on the government, and importantly, NDA. But, ma'am, we have to keep in mind the process that has been implemented for the last four years. It's called faceless assessment that has been implemented. There are numerous, com numerous issues that have been raised because of this. Of course, this is useful for a lot of taxpayers. But recently, a lot of people are complaining that too many sections are being evoked. And, for example, if someone is, uh, uh, if someone is given 10 crores as a penalty for, the, for him to pay, if, if that person has to go for reassessment, he has to pay the 20% to actually go for this re reassessment, ma'am. Because of this, taxpayers are actually feeling the brunt. So I wish and I hope the finance ministry will take this matter into the account so that we will make it easy for the taxpayers to actually come into the fold, ma'am. Also, also, there is a rise in the gross revenue by almost 14 percent, ma'am. And I also have to thank the finance ministry for reducing the corporate tax from 40 percent to 35 percent, ma'am. Also, uh, we have made numerous representations to the finance minister regarding the angel tax that has been levied. And uh, this is a boon, ma'am, uh, that the uh, finance ministry has uh, removed this. And uh, this will help startups to uh, the whole ecosystem will develop in the next uh, few years to come. But the one word that has to be removed from the district, the, in the, from the uh, history of the finance ministry is uh, with, respect, with respect to the ret retrospective tax, which we keep hearing from, date, uh, from time to time, ma'am. Yesterday also I was reading somewhere with regards to the mineral, mineral development, mineral industry, which has come forward and saying that we cannot function, this industry can't function if you go for a retrospective tax. And a few years back also there was a, on summer industry, there was another retrospective tax. I think the finance minister has, sit, has to sit with them. Even the rice exporters also has come to me and said this retrospective tax has been implemented on us. So if you do keep doing this just to earn some money from uh, the businesses that are doing very well. Uh, this will not encourage the businesses to flourish, ma'am. So I think and I hope the finance, my finance minister will take this into account and uh, take this retrospective tax out of the disciplinary, ma'am. And, uh, and coming to the capex expenditure, there's been almost 17% 17, 17 increase, and uh, this government has been doing it for the last five, six, five, six uh, uh, years that the capex has been the main go-to go area where the development in the country is, is been happening, and every year this capex, uh, capex expenditure has been increasing. And this year, almost it's 11 crore, uh, 11,000 uh, crores has been uh, uh, put in place for the cap, ca, ca, capital expenditure, ma'am. But the problem is, the last year, last year, out of 10 lakhs that had been earmarked for the ca, cap, capital expenditure, only 9.48 lakhs has been spent, ma'am. So almost 52,000. Close was not even spent on the ca capital expenditure, so I request the finance ministry to actually look into it. Having the capital expenditure of 11 lakhs or 11 lakhs is one thing, but actually spending it on the ground is a different thing. So I hope the finance minister will look into it. And the uh, second point being, ma'am, with, re with respect to the lot of members have uh, raised this point with, uh, with regards to the reduction of long-term capital gains, gain tax from 20% 20, 20 to 12%, ma'am. And they also mentioned about the indexation. A lot of members have been mentioned, uh, mentioned about this, ma'am. And uh, there's a lot of talk also outside. So I hope and uh, I expect the finance minister to look into it. So that because this is hard, pay, uh, uh, hard ta taxpayers' money, ma'am. Also, uh, middle class people are being affected on this, ma'am. So I think there should be a relook at this indexation so that they, middle class people, because they think real estate is one thing that they can safely invest in. So I, I, uh, we feel it should be protected. I hope the finance minister will uh, listen to this, ma'am. Also, coming to the third point. Uh, uh, 
my colleague Mohammad Mohitra has mentioned very clear, uh, very, very, uh, very agitatedly that uh, I don't know where the funds are coming from Andhra Pradesh because she said she didn't see anything, uh, any any special allocation that was made. But uh, I think, uh, I th correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it has been mentioned in Department of Economic Affairs, wherein 62,000 crores has been earmarked for the. Uh, for for, 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 the, for, the, for the entire amount has been earmarked for capital expenditure as far uh, as also for the new schemes that have been announced, ma'am. So I hope and I wish this Purvaday scheme which has been announced for Andhra Pradesh and all the other eastern states that uh, my friend, my colleague has mentioned, I hope uh, this 62,000 crores will be given to us and uh, majority will be given to Andhra Pradesh, ma'am. And uh, coming to the point number four, ma'am, with regards to the clauses, which are from uh, clauses from 88 to 99, which deal with the Vivaatse Vishwas. This, be, this has been a scheme which has been in effect for the last four years. This is used by uh, the, the, this is used by a lot of taxpayers as, as well as a lot of uh, industry people also, ma'am. This has been a successful, a successful scheme. But the problem right now that we should re revisit is I've been reading that uh, clauses, ma'am, but nowhere, nowhere in those clauses there's no mention of timelines has been mentioned because we, I, I'm looking for them because. Almost 5.4 lakh income tax appeals are pending at the commissionate level, ma'am. We can only address this when we have a timeline defined in those clauses. I hope Finance Minister will look into it and uh, try to address this, for, address this uh, issue, ma'am. And also, coming to the point number five, ma'am, with regards to the health healthcare, we have done amazingly well in the last 10 years or so. Numerous medical colleges, AIMS has been developed, and also number of postgraduate seats has been increased. But we should, uh, but, but there's a 18 percent GST on health insurance policy. <coughs> Ma'am, if you look at the percentage of people having life insurance, there's 75 percent of them are having life insurance. Only 25 percent of them is having health or medical insurance. There's, there's uneven, uneven uh, uh, the numbers that are here, ma'am. It should be the opposite way. More people should have the health insurance or medical insurance uh, uh, and uh, less people to have the life insurance policy, or equal at least. But somehow it is skewed in one direction. It can be addressed only if this GST can be reduced so that more people can ac have access to the medical insurance and health insurance, ma'am. Also coming to the point number six, ma'am, with regards to the agriculture. Agriculture, yes, we have come up with the numerous schemes for the, from the central government. Uh, uh, every year, central government is giving 6,000 rupees for every farmer, PM Kisan Nidhi, and uh, there's a so uh, soil health card being given, and various other schemes, insurance also has been given. So various other schemes have been gi given from the cent central government, and uh, there's a definite drive from the central government to improve the improve the conditions of the farmers and uh, double the farmers income but but we need to re review the 20 percent gs 12 percent gst on the agriculture equipment 80 per 18 percent gst on the tractors and machines for processing and milling and 15 percent gst on pesticides. i think instead of having these many numbers of uh, uh, percentages and these many brackets of gst numbers i hope and i wish finance minister will come with a lesser number like how they have it five percent for fertilizers i hope uh, all the others also will come into the same bracket so that the farmers will be, uh, will get benefited ma'am also coming to the textile industry which is uh, one of the backbone of my district, ma'am. There are a lot of textile, textile par parks are there, a lot of textile industry is there, a lot of yarns are there. But the problem that they have, and uh, the finance ministry, to, uh, we request you to look at it, is with regards to the 11 percent import duty, which is levied, uh, levied on the cotton, cotton that is imported, ma'am. Yes, we have to protect the farmers, and Cotton Corporation for India is buying the cotton from the farmers at a good price. Yes, we appreciate that. But at the same time, Protecting the farmers is one thing, but protecting the industry is also is, is our duty. The only way we can protect the industry is actually giving them the enough raw material so that they can produce good quality products and be and be competent when they export it to the other countries. They have to compete with countries like uh, Bangladesh and uh, uh, Vietnam. They can only be competent when these raw material that is, that is needed for these co uh, cotton mills are provided at a reasonable price, not by the government, but I'm saying if the import, if the import duty of 11 percent is decreased, they'll become much more competitive, ma'am. Coming to the hand loops, again, it's a huge, huge, huge employment gen generator, ma'am, across the country. And also, we take pride in these hand looms uh, for the last, uh, for so many centuries, ma'am. And Prime Minister keeps on talking about hand looms and handicrafts every year, ma'am. But 
uh, there is also a growth of 5 to 7 percent in the last five years with regards to the handlooms, ma'am. But the problem is with regards to the National Handloom Development Program, the estimates as well as uh, uh, revised estimates every year has been decreasing, ma'am. In 2021-22, it's 485. It has reduced to 200 to crores. Uh, the estimates have reduced to 200 crores from 485 crores. And revised estimates from 2021. 344 crores, it has reduced to 150, uh, 156 crores in 2023. So I think I, I, and I, I wish that uh, handlooms is a, one of the backbone of our country. We pride about it, handlooms, uh, handlooms and handicrafts. So I, uh, I wish the finance minister will look into it. Ma'am, less than two minutes, ma'am, because I am the only speaker for my party. We have enough time, ma'am. And also coming to coming to the SCZs in the textile industry, ma'am. There's a, a friend of mine, Ramesh, Mr. C.M. Ramesh. Uh, in his constituency, there is a company called Brandix, which employs almost 30,000 uh, women, ma'am, in this industry. And there's uh, exports that have happened at a, at a breathtaking place from this industry, ma'am. But the problem is from this SCZ, but the problem is when they are, ex when they are manufacturing them and they're much more uh, quality oriented and they're exporting to the other countries, there is a, no provision for them. They're ready to pay the tax to sell in India, but there's no provision for them to sell in India, ma'am. If iPhone can be manufactured by Foxconn in India, and it can be exported as well as it can be sold in India. Why can't this be so? Uh, they have the same provision. So I, I request the ministry to look into this, ma'am. And uh, coming to the aquaculture, this is one of the major industry in Andhra Pradesh. Almost 70 percent of the aqua uh, exports happen from Andhra Pradesh, ma'am. Uh, 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 there's so much, uh, uh, so many new schemes that have been Im implemented in this. There's so much push and uh, nudging that has been given to the aqua farmers as well as the processors. Aqua processors have been doing very well and uh, Mofi is doing uh, uh, amazing uh, coming up with new schemes and also the PLA scheme that has been, uh, that has been come, up, uh, come up. The aqua processors have used it uh, to the full of larger extent. So as a country, aqua process processing is, uh, capacity is very high, but the problem is with regards to the farmers that are able to do the production. That is very low, ma'am. But with, uh, for, to address that, there's a scheme called Pradhan Mantri Matsya Sampad Yojana. But the problem is the budgeted estimate was uh, 2,000 crores in 23-24, but the revised was 1,500 crores. So the, and most of this, what have been the 1,500 crores that have been actually revised estimates, even those has been gone to the government. Government has get, taken them and spent them on fishing arbors and other things. But the problem, is, the problem that, uh, that the ministry has to understand is 90% of it, production, processing is done by the private players. Government has not much role in doing uh, in, in the whole equation of this, but somehow the government is accessing all this one. So I hope the scheme will be, uh, you know, rephrased or uh, re reworked in such a way that private players can actually, who are actually, uh, who are in the process of uh, exporting and who is in the process of production of uh, aquaculture can be used, uh, can use this papriyam, uh, uh, so I hope the uh, ministry will look into it. So, coming to the last, last point, ma'am, and uh, there is a white paper that has been released in Andhra Pradesh, ma'am, with regards to the Andhra Pradesh financial situation, ma'am. It is, uh, I, I, I'm sure we will, uh, Print it out, and we will distribute it to all the members in this house as well in the Raj Sabha. So I hope you will go through it, go through it, and I hope you understand the financial position of Andhra Pradesh. I'll just briefly put it on record. What is the financial position, ma'am? Just give me one minute, ma'am. The expenses as of this year is 1.64 lakh crores, ma'am. The revenues is 1.45 lakh crores. That means we are deficit by almost 19,000 crores in this, this uh, financial year, ma'am. State debt has increased from 3.75 lakh, lakh crores, which was in 2019, to almost 9.74 lakhs in 2024. Growth rate has decreased from 13.5 percent to 10.5 percent now, ma'am. And also, agriculture sector has gone down by uh, gone down from 16 percent to 10 percent now, ma'am. And also, the capex exp expenditure, which was 60,000 crores from 2014 to 2019, the uh, white paper is saying, ma'am, uh, it has gone down to 24,000 crores in 2019-24. Last last half ha half a minute, ma'am, I'll wind it up. So there's a decrease of capex, and there is a decrease of uh, uh, se sectoral growth in agriculture as well as uh, a, uh, any other sector. You look look at it, industrial sector. There's a decrease in the sectoral growth also, ma'am. And the per capita debt has been almost doubled from 74,000 rupees per, per head to almost 144,000 in Andhra Pradesh, ma'am. The inflation has also been risen from 4.5 percent to 6.2 percent, ma'am. So, all in all, on one side, we are having a huge debt on the uh, uh, huge debt, and we have revenue deficit every year. On the other side, we are not 
whatever we have borrowed, we are not. We not, ma'am. Last 20 seconds, ma'am. We are not. Whatever we borrowed in the last five years or so, we are not infused into the capital expenditure, ma'am. This has brought the uh, brought the state to our knees, ma'am. We are ready to actually work with the central government. We are ready to actually. Uh, again, stand up, and uh, we are again uh, looking for to re rebuild the state, ma'am. So I request the finance ministry to look into it, so that re they can actually restructure the loans that are uh, indebted by the state of Andhra Pradesh, so that we can actually run with the other states as well, ma'am. Thank you very much. Yeah.